Chapter 15, Our Autonomous Future Several times in this book, we highlight the theoretical advantages of autonomous vehicles such as reduced headways that dramatically increase the capacity of existing infrastructure and the ability to save countless lives. We also highlight that reduced travel costs such as the burden of driving could lead to induced demand, undermining at least some of the congestion-reducing benefits of the increased capacity, and sparser developments, sapping advantages of residential density. While the fundamental technology for autonomous cars is close to ready, we might also want to acknowledge that we may not be quite as ready ourselves. One issue is that many of the advantages of AVs can only come with a fully autonomous fleet. The transition period may be long and perhaps even painful. One reason is that many people actually love driving, at least in some situations. Just picture the parking lot attendants, figure 15.1, that borrow the Ferrari in the classic 1980s coming-of-age film Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Or think about the fact that the Fast and the Furious movie franchise has made over $5 billion in counting. While driving is not exactly a constitutionally protected right in the United States, the debate might parallel the gun debate in some circles. In other words, some will say, you're going to have to pull the steering wheel out of my cold, dead hands. There are also important policy decisions that need to be made regarding how we use our autonomous autos. For one, will they be a shared resource or will we continue the personal ownership model? If the former, I can get dropped off at work while the car continues to be a workhorse for others. If the latter, would I park my autonomous car all day or would it be able to drive around without a passenger? If so, could I send it home by itself and tell it to come pick me up later? Or could I have it circle the block a dozen times while I attend a meeting or grab dinner? If we make poor policy decisions, our autonomous future could actually lead to a marked increase in vehicle travel and congestion, despite the increased perception reaction times and reduced headways. One hopes that poor policy choices will be quickly revised. History gives us mixed support for those hopes. In a recent survey of nearly 18,000 people about their scofflaw transport behavior, Every single respondent admitted to breaking the law in transport in some fashion. While we aren't all criminals, we also take it for granted that 5 miles per hour, 8 kilometers per hour, over the speed limit is essentially permissible even though it is illegal. Will people be able to wrap their heads around a car that actually drives the speed limit? Or will we allow our autonomous cars to bend the laws? Or will we bend the laws somehow? When and if we do finally get to a fully autonomous fleet, there are many technical issues worth considering beyond the typical discourse about the congestion benefits of autonomous vehicles. Will they always function correctly? Given that mobile phones don't always respond as quickly as we would like, it is difficult to imagine a device that is left out in the elements all the time being consistently instantaneous and reliable. What happens if dust or mud gets on the sensors? Will we be washing our cars daily? What about issues such as sun glare, or even the possibility of hackers with such connected technologies? And how will AVs interact with pedestrians and bicyclists? It's easy to think that we program our vehicles not to run over pedestrians. However, if we assume a fully autonomous fleet, will people be able to walk into a busy road and part traffic like the Red Sea? The simple understanding that autonomous vehicles will acquiesce to potential conflicts could provide pedestrians, especially teenagers, and bicyclists, as well as the remaining drivers, free reign to bully the autonomous cars. Should the AVs be carrying passengers, physical conflicts could arise. The AVs will undoubtedly have cameras. Will the bully be publicly identified? Empty AVs, on the other hand, might just sit patiently. New laws might need to be developed, defining robot harassment and trying to figure out what to do about it. While this sort of thought experiment about the cultural, political, ethical, and logistical complications of autonomous vehicles can go on indefinitely, the promise of accessibility combined with the potential of millions of lives saved from preventable crashes means that we should continue progressing down this path. But if we truly want to achieve the benefits of our autonomous future, we need to be mindful of the possible forks in the road.